To say it's been a long season would be a bit of an understatement. Heading into today's episode, we have played, not counting friendlies, 65 competitive matches. We've got the final three of the season, plus the playoffs. It's all starting right now. And welcome back, everyone, to episode number 61 of the American Dream. I'm Mr. Cellophane. If you've enjoyed the series so far, make sure you hit a like on this video. Greatly appreciate it. And subscribe to the channel for more football manager videos, please and thank you. We start on our finances screen because, well, I want to avoid any spoilers. We are in a fantastic position, nearly 15 million in the bank, still 9 million left over in the transfer budget to continue to build this team into next year already starting to formulate some plans as to which direction we are going to go in we have had an incredibly successful year with the team that we have but we can always do better for the highlights the first of three remaining games in the closing stage first one against bottom of the table Perez Zella Don Machado though with an absolute blast into the top corner would put the visitors up one nil, but that would be the only joy they would see on the night. Beautiful ball forward from Zacharia Tusha, putting it past Barrientos to tie things up 30 minutes in. And then just before halftime, off of a set piece, Castro with the back post header, making it 2 1 Sapriso. We would add on to that as we took control in the second half. Tusha. Coming in off of the cross from Getz, making it 3-1. Lopez carrying it forward. He would pick up an injury. This would be his last appearance of the season for us. Getz with the ball in, deflecting off of the defender past Barrientos. 4-1, Saprisa, and we would add a fifth. Dillam Getz once again involved, playing it into the middle. Secaria back for Getz, in for Gomez, past Barrientos. For what turned out to be a very commanding 5-1 victory, it would keep us four points ahead of second place with just two matches remaining. Unfortunately, our chance of winning it all on the pitch were taken away as second place Punta Reynas failed in their penultimate match to pick up any points, leaving us four points ahead and guaranteeing us a spot in the grand final, which meant that we were able to rotate our squad as we took on San Carlos on the road in our next to last match. And San Carlos would take advantage as Ortiz put it past David Hernandez 10 minutes in to take an early 1 0 lead. They would make it two as Rojas to Munoz finding Ortiz. 2 0 San Carlos. We would get one back. Leonardo Arias sending it across. Ramirez back for Arias, drilling it into the ground, into the open net. But 2-1 would be where we ended up. Pretty even match when all was said and done. But at the end of the day, our B team came up just a little bit short. So we would host in 11th place Santos on the final day of the season. They gave us a lot of trouble throughout the year, but not this time. Ramirez turns, fires, and scores to put us ahead 25 minutes in. We would add a second goal. Gomez dropping it for Aquista, moving it to his left foot. William Ramirez with an absolute worldie from outside of the box. 2-0. Esteban Cordero would miss a penalty in the 37th minute, which would have made it 3-0. Santos did not manage a shot on goal until the 90th minute. This match, we should have scored more, but it was ultimately all Saprisa in the end, out shooting Santos 22-3, winning on the final match day, earning a well-deserved three points, and seeing us top the overall table by 24 points. Which brings us once again to the most confusing playoff system in the world. Matched up in the semifinals against Herediano, off of a set piece, Valverde getting the start at DM. Beautiful pass, what vision to Secaria, who's able to put it past Shamaro for the only goal of the match, in which we again found ourselves completely dominant. Herediano, even though they managed nine shots on goal, did not get their first shot on target until stoppage time of the second half, which meant we would carry a 1-0 aggregate lead into the home leg, and eight minutes in, Brand Innocente on the set piece. We knew Herediano wasn't very good at defending corners, and we proved it there. What a ball through. Marrera is in for his 19th goal of the year in all competitions. And even though Herediano was second in the overall table in the regular season, we took care of them yet again. Another easy victory, 2-0 the final. We win the semis, 3-0 on aggregate. 
which leads us to a matchup in the finals and potentially the grand final, but we're keeping our fingers crossed that we don't have to get that far for our 71st match of the season against Cartagena. We are opening up the series at home, so hopefully a dominant performance there will make the away leg superfluous. And while historically Cartagena have had our number, the last five matchups, we've gone four, one, and oh, we're hoping that trend continues here in the final. Meanwhile, with this run of success and the chance of us winning a domestic treble, we've gone to the board, asked them to improve our training facilities and youth recruitment. Took a little bit of doing, but the fear of being left behind by our rivals means that both are set to be improved. Although, to be fair, our facilities already ranked amongst the tops in Costa Rica. And just in time for the first leg of this final, my neighbors have decided to start mowing their lawns. So apologies in advance for any background noise. We've got Conte in goal, a back four of Bacar, Innocente, Barrantes, and Hugo Cordero. Aquista and Castro will man the midfield. Alejandro Braun, who has been absolutely fantastic. We just signed him to a new two-year deal as a team leader. We just really couldn't see parting with him. He has been such a valuable piece off of the bench. That is where he is going to get the start. Tushin gets are going to be on the wings. Marrera at the 10 and Sekaria will be leading the line as our striker. He has been a fantastic addition to this team as we head into this final. Looking to carry over our excellent form in the last three matches. Two dominating performances over Herediano. Three clean sheets in a row for Mohamed Conte. It's our 100th match in charge of Saprissa. We are taking on Cartagena in the final. Not the grand final. That only comes if we lose. It's a round we are looking to bypass. And we are hoping that we can keep the pressure on that we have exerted on our competition over the last couple of weeks. Three shots on goal to nil in the early going is a great way to do it. If we can keep Cartagena to the level of productivity that we did Herediano, that will go a long way for us winning the tie. But Her Cartagena is in control. Parkins playing it up. Alfaro will lose it. Tusha takes it away, pushes it forward, splits the defense, shoots, and Ruaba able to make a save. We'll push it back behind for a Saprisa corner, which will be handled by Hugo Cordero. This is where Alejandro Braun would come in if he were in there. Barantes, though, just a little bit too strong with the header. Cannot keep it down. 7-1, your shots on goal through 25 minutes. And uh, the possession actually going towards Cartagena, which is a bit different than we are used to. But Willem gets lining up in front of a free kick in a dangerous position, looking for the top corner, and he hits the crossbar, and Cartagena able to clear still a very impressive showing in this first half so far by Saprisa. we are taking it to Cartagena. it is just going to be a matter of time until our opportunities fall at our feet Marrera with the corner Innocente can't win the header Castro back for gets across Tusha with a drive and Ruaba diving for it but it's going to be just that little bit wide I thought he had made the save I thought it deflected off of the goalkeeper's hand but ultimately it went out 14 to 3, your shots on goal. The possession has tilted back in favor of Saprissa. The XG a little bit disconcerting at 1.47 with no goals on the board. So in the second half, we just need to do that little bit better. And we even let the team know that we were not happy with their performance out there. We kind of were, but you know, they need that little bit of a nudge. If you've been playing Football Manager 24 for long enough, you know that sometimes getting down on the team is better than being up on the team. 63 minutes in, Tusha sending it into the box, cleared away, Aquista, Marrera back, Barrientes finds Tusha, but he can't curl it inside that far post. Another missed opportunity for Saprissa in this match, and we are not taking advantage of our home field in the way that we really should be at this point. So we are going to look to make some changes. Willem Getz is going to come out. Edward Lopez will take his spot. Vitin Tusha not having the greatest game. William Ramirez has been a fantastic sub. And Alejandro Braun is going to replace Steven Aquista to get some fresh legs out there in the midfield. Hopefully those changes are going to pay their dividends. Ball played out wide. Lopez has to go back for it, but he's got plenty of space. He'll chip it. 
Far post, good switch of play. Ramirez tracking it down. He overcooked that cross a little bit. Bacar back for Ramirez into the box. Ruaba will punch it away, and that was a huge mistake as Edward Lopez finds the back of the net. His 18th of the year to put Saprisa up 1-0. Took 76 minutes or so, but we finally found the breakthrough that we needed. Hopefully one goal is going to be enough. Diego Moreira, though, that is not good news. Esteban Cordero is going to come in, but he will not be at the 10. That's going to be Edward Lopez and Secaria will flop on over to our right-sided attacking winger as Cordero comes in as the striker, and he will take a free kick. Short for Ramirez. Lopez with a drive and his brace. A priest to two. Cartagena's nil. Knee slide for days. Yeah, I don't know why I just said that. But taking a 2-0 lead late in this match is going to prove to be absolutely huge when we head on the road for the second leg at Cartagena in just a couple of days' time. A pair of goals in the 77th and 88th minutes for Edward Lopez coming in off the bench, coming back from injury, were key in this one. We should have absolutely destroyed Cartagena. 25 shots on goal, 9 on target. We did still manage to underperform our XG, but we held them to 4 shots on goal, 2 on target, and a point one. That, my friends, is dominance. Sadly, though, the dominance does come with a cost. Diego Moreira is going to be out for the next three weeks, which means that he is going to miss the second leg of the final, and if we have to play it, the grand final as well. We've won four in a row against Cartagena, looking to make it five in the second leg of this final, which will win us the championship and the domestic treble. Just two changes to the lineup as Edward Lopez comes in in replace of the injured Diego Moreira. Also, Jose Pablo Espinosa getting the start at the right wing as Willem Getz drops down to the bench. Everybody else is the same. Mohamed Kante, of course, in goal. Bakar, Innocente, Barantes, and Cordero as our back four. Aquistan Castro in the midfield. Tusha on the left and Secaria up front. Trying to cement our place in Saprissa history. We won the opening stage. We won the Supercopa. And now a chance to take home the closing stage crown. All that will be left for us besides the Costa Rican Cup, which we also failed to win, we made it to the final, is the CONCACAF Champions Cup. And that's what we are hoping to do next season. But the task at hand is beating Cartagena. We've got a 2-0 aggregate lead. And Montero with a very early pointed question. 15 seconds in, clattering it off of the crossbar. Conte having to come over and deal with another cross. An early salvo from Cartagena, and they look like a completely different team than the one that we just saw a couple of days ago on our pitch. Conte punches it away, played into the middle. Casada putting it past Conte, his 14th goal of the year. It's going to count. Conte, why he didn't hold on to that one, I have absolutely no idea. Didn't we learn from the last match that punching the ball out never ends well? Cartagena is really trying to make a play for pushing this to another two-game tie in the grand final. Innocente, though, in control. We have managed over 60% possession so far in this match, but we have yet to get a shot on goal. Conte will play it out for Barantes. Andre Castro back for Barantes. More pressure being put on by Cartagena than they did in the last match. Castro trying to feed it to Espinoza. It's picked off there. And here comes Cartagena the other way. Parkins out wide. Munguia into the middle. Valencia settling it down. Quesada in once again. And Giancarlo Quesada with his second goal of the match. 15th of the year. 2-0 on the night. And we are tied on aggregate. But Cartagena is asking all of the questions so far in this first half. And so far, we have had absolutely no answers for them. It took over 30 minutes for us to get our first shot on goal of the match. And for all intents and purposes, we are tied heading into the second half as the first half winds down. Nine shots on goal to two. It has been the Giancarlo Casada show. We need to do better in the final 45, or we may have more football to play in an already jam-packed season.
The big question in the second half is, can we find the back of the net and can we find a solution for Giancarlo Casada early on? A free kick opportunity for Cartagena. Alfaro to Casada. So much for marking him tightly. So much for tackling him hard. Casada, he's got his hat trick, and it's Cartagena three, Saprisa nil. So we are going to need two goals in this second half if we are going to win this one, claim the trophy, and avoid the grand final. We need at least one goal just to push it to extra time and potentially penalties. We have 25 minutes with which to do that, and we are going to make some changes to our lineup. Akista is very frustrated. Dude, I feel ya. Alejandro Braun is going to come in. Sekaria not doing the job up front, so Esteban Cordero will take over. Espinosa also feeling very frustrated. Same with Andre Castro. Not a lot we can do about it. We're only going to make the two changes right now, and we're going to see how things play out. Valencia with a corner for Cartagena sending it in. Innocente trying to clear. Bacar finally gets it out but Valencia will track it down near the midfield stripe. Looking to recycle it quickly. Alfaro though will play it back to Parkins. Parkins pushing it forward out left for Carcuz into the middle. Barantes will step in front of it. Can we get the counter attack going? Castro throwing it forward. He's got Lopez. Lopez in and he will drill it home from just outside the box. His 20th goal of the year. Andre Castro with the assist. It's 3-1 and we've tied it up on aggregate with 20 minutes left to go. What vision shown by Andre Castro to get this tie once again even? But Cartagena's look at the comeback off of the ensuing kickoff. Alfaro in control out wide to Montero. Bacar isn't going to be able to challenge him. Alfaro dropping it back for Montero. You remember Alfaro? He was playing for us for a while. Montero. Alfaro in the box. Sending it across. Espinosa will cut it off. Send it out toward the near sideline. Tusha will settle it down. Alejandro Braun sending it out. Bacar charging forward. Fed to Lopez. Lopez around the edge of the box. Taken out, but he's still with it. Into the box. Braun. Lopez. Castro. Oh, and his shot is going to sail high and wide. A beautiful opportunity for Andre Castro. A sitter he just could not take advantage of. Off of the quarter. Braun sending it in, but Ruaba will come off his line and grab that out of the air. Cartagena a little bit better at defending corners than Herediano was. Sent long, looking for Lorenzetti, but Innocenti is there. Bacar playing it ahead. Tusha up the sideline, into the middle. Lopez, ridden off by Solis, and Gonzalez will look to turn it back up. Parkins finds Munguia. Munguia in. He'll shoot, and Conte up to the task as Marvin Yara is going to come in for Montero along the right wing. But there's going to be a corner opportunity for Cartagena with just over 10 minutes remaining in this match. They're leading 3-1 on the night. It is 3-3 three, three on aggregate. Parkins taking his time before delivering the in-swinging corner. With the left foot, sending it in. Carcuz too strong on the header. Five minutes remaining. Braun sending it in. Five minutes to go. Barantes gets the header on, and he makes it 3-2, his eighth goal of the year. And Saprisa reclaims the aggregate lead. All we need to do is hang on, but Raidson sending in the corner. Espinoza can't clear it. Munguia settling it down. Raidson chipping it across. Conte coming off his line to grab it out of the air and settle things down. 3-2 on the night in favor of Cartagena, but that's not the story. It is 4-3 in favor of Saprisa in this final. And we are one minute plus stoppage time away from winning it all. Cordero back for Espinosa. Head for Lopez. Pushing it into the box. Lopez with his left foot. Puts it home. There's the nail in the coffin. It's 3-3 on the night. 5-3 on aggregate. And we're going to win. Just five minutes of stoppage time. Added on. And we are looking for more. Ball towards Lopez. It's dealt with. Yara ahead for Lorenzetti. Lorenzetti into the middle. Solis. He's got Vila. Vila is in. But he cannot Get the shot on target, and time is going to expire very shortly. Brand sending it in. It goes over everybody. A penalty has been called and a chance for Saprisa to really put the exclamation point on this final and win the game as well as the tie. Esteban Cordero shoots, scores, and does it. It's Cartagena's three, Saprisa four, and that is that. And after going down 
nil. We put in four in the second half. A brace for Edward Lopez. Carlos Barantes with a corner header in the 86th minute. And Esteban Cordero with the exclamation point in the 96th. Scoring a penalty to give us the 4-3 victory. A 6-3 aggregate win. But for some reason, the FA came unprepared. No trophy lift for us. But we have won the treble. A feat which has earned Billy Flynn a spot in the Costa Rica Hall of Fame. And while that's all well and good, we are here to win the CONCACAF Champions Cup. We did not do it this year. Next year, though, that is tops on our list. We're going to do everything we can to prepare for the new season. Moves will be made, and that's all coming up in tomorrow's episode. If you liked this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel if you are new or just if you haven't already. Thank you to everyone who has already supported the channel. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'll see you next time. Until then, bye-bye.